defeating yeah. monsters the way Nintendo intended? Well, inside of this official strategy guide are the recommended tactics that Nintendo wants you to use when fighting these monsters. Let's go over the constructs. All constructs have a principal vulnerability, their red eyes. Shots to this weak spot will knock them back, and in the case of soldier constructs, cause them to drop their equipment when their health is low. At this point, you want to quickly steal their weapons or move them out of reach with Ultra Hand to force these opponents to fight unarmed. You could use combat techniques like perfect defense, which involves you parrying their attacks with a shield or dodging at the right time to do a flurry rush. You can also use the freeze and swap technique, which basically has you hitting the enemy with a frozen infused weapon and then hitting them with another weapon after that that does three times damage. It's suggested to use a much more stronger weapon after you freeze them so you can do massive damage. The freeze and swap trick will alone make short work of any of these construct opponents. Well, goblins are essentially the training dummies of Hyrule. Bokoblins are ideal sparring partners for practicing two essential combat moves, the perfect dodge and the perfect guard. When you face the only survivor of a group, you want to use this opportunity to stop attacking entirely and focus exclusively on the timing of these defensive maneuvers. At first, you'll take some hits, but a single Bokoblin possesses very limited danger, and any progress you make in the art of perfect defense or enhance your combat against all enemy types. Headshots are remarkably effective against Bokoblins, even the silver ones, and will always stop them in their tracks. If you can hit them with a headshot to make them fall from a significant height or plunge into the water, you should do it. It's an instant kill. Now for the boss Bokoblin, which surprisingly I didn't know something about. While you may be tempted to first eliminate the weaker standard sized Bokoblins before turning your attention to the boss, Nintendo actually argues in favor of the opposite. As long as the boss Bokoblin is supported by its underlings, it'll generally refrain from attacking as a squad you face focuses largely on defense. You can slowly but surely grind down the health of a boss Bokoblin with a constant barrage of headshots. And while I'm doing that, let's move on to another monster and come back to this boss Bokoblin after. Next up are Moblins. Headshots briefly stun Moblins, enabling you to dish out melee damage in rapid bursts, if you're quick. The freeze and swap approach is suggested again if you are struggling fighting any of these creatures. An ice-infused spear can stop them in their tracks before you set about them with a powerful weapon. Seriously, this game really loves ice-infused spears. For perfect defense counters against Moblins, pay close attention to the way their arms move. They clearly telegraph the nature of their eminent attack. If they position their weapon above their head or shake their head and arms before lunging forward with their horn, then you need to react with a side hop. Conversely, if they move their weapon to the side like a baseball player poised to strike you should execute a backflip after performing overhead attacks moblins will usually spend a few seconds pulling their weapon from the ground you can use this opportunity to also perform combos or initiate a charge attack with a two-handed weapon without the danger of being interrupted during the windup all the Zalfos variants share the same prominent weakness, their horn. If you hit this body part with an arrow, you will cause critical damage and knock your opponent down. In close proximity, a bow that fires multiple arrows can make it relatively easy to score such horn shots without carefully aiming. You can follow up with a melee combo as well. However, be wary with Electric Lizalfos. Horn shots trigger a spherical area of effect blast that will shock you if you're caught within its radius. So make sure to stay out of that. Ice Breath Lizalfos die instantly if struck with any fire elemental attacks. And Fire Breath Lizalfos fall immediately to ice elemental strikes. Arrows enhanced with Fire Fruit, Ice Fruit, or Colored Choo Choo Jelly can make it really easy to defeat these opponents. Because you don't even need to aim for their weak spots. It's also good to freeze or shock these Lizalfos because their strongest asset is their mobility and being able to stop that is the key to defeating them. Now let's move on to stall monsters. A single blow with anything, irrespective of the weapon's power, will cause a stall monster to fall apart. In the case of stall moblins, you're gonna have to do two hits to make them fall apart. They will then magically reform and resume their attack unless you strike the head to destroy it. Focus on one stall at a time and hit it twice. First on any body part, and then break the head. The reach and speed of spears makes them more efficient against these opponents. Alternatively, you can do something that people discovered much later in the game by using something called Dazzle Fruits on these monsters. When you use a Dazzle Fruit, they instantly get nuked and die. 
That's it. Oh, so it looks like the boss Bokoblin's health is now low. So Nintendo suggests that we should consider shooting an arrow enhanced with a bomb flower at it. This explosion will affect the entire group, potentially wiping them out all at once. Alternatively, we can hit a boss Bokoblin with a muddle bud, which will lead to interesting scenarios where it turns against its own minions. Literally just destroys them. Climbing to a high ground and jumping to trigger the slow motion effect when you pull out your bow, can be a devastating way to eliminate an entire boss Bokoblin squad. Fire a few arrows enhanced with bomb flowers or for an even greater blast, an elemental gemstone like the rubies. If you fight a boss Bokoblin one-on-one, -on -one, you can also practice perfect defense counters and the famous freeze and swap technique, which hits the boss Bokoblin, freezes it, you switch your weapon out and hit it with another weapon to do three times more damage. Choo-choo's are defeated instantly by most attacks. As the elemental variants explode, the safest way to eliminate them is by shooting an arrow from a safe distance. If you're short on arrows, it's also possible to bait and evade attacks by elemental choo-choo's just like this as soon as you see the elemental wear off of their body quickly strike them with the spear before their ice fire or electricity power can recharge most people are probably doing this recommended technique here's a few recommended tactics for like likes if you want to be extra safe stay at a distance from these creatures hold zr to have your bow ready and strafe to avoid projectiles release an arrow the moment the worm reveals its weak point you can even fire an elemental arrow at the body as long as the monster is not immune to the effect an ice arrow for example will not affect an ice like if you feel really confident in your reflexes, you, you can deliberately stay at close range. The monster will then show its uvula and you can swiftly hit it. Spears are the best choice since they have longer range and you can follow up with your best combos. If you take too long, however, you can run into the risk of being swallowed, but there's more than enough time to react if you are paying attention. If you're fighting against a rock like, you need to wield a weapon with a crushing property to first break the stone casting. Any weapon upgraded with suitable materials like horns from moblins or harblins for instance or even rocks found in the environment will do the trick you can also use recall on the rocks that this creature spits at you just like this and you can go ahead and destroy it the recommended tactics for keys are pretty simple lock on and attack from a safe distance either with an arrow or a spear when you encounter a key swarm most commonly near cave entrances attach a bomb flower to an arrow then aim to detonate it at the heart of the swarm it'll rain wings and eyeballs Horriblins are a new enemy in Tears of the Kingdom, and they also have their own recommended tactics on how to deal with them. Before I tell you about their tactics, just look at their back and how hairy it is. These dudes are hairy-backed cave climbers that can use a bit of manscaping, which is why this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulas, and premium boxers. And their performance package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. The packaging on this is really nice, very impressive. This is the Lawnmower 4.0. This cordless electric trimmer has has got cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents. It's also waterproof so you can trim in the shower and it's got 90 minutes of full charge. And us Tears of the Kingdom players know how important having full charge is. It even comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. It's rechargeable, has a battery with up to 45 minutes and has an awesome steel blade system to better whack those weeds. These two products in the 4.0 kit have been a game changer. The Crop Preserver ball deodorant for that after shower all day bo protection and the crop reviver ball toner spray with a nice cooling effect made with aloe vera to refresh those areas nicely manscaped even threw in two free gifts the anti-chafing boxers and the shed travel bag go to manscaped.com right now and use code philly beats you to get 20 percent off and free worldwide shipping now back to the horror blends when a horriblin hangs from a ceiling, there are a few ways to make it fall. Hitting it with a headshot, body shots with elemental arrows work too, blinding it with the dazzle fruit, perfect guarding an attack, or casting recall on a rock that it throws at you, which Nintendo likes to call it the return to sender technique, are efficient ways to deal with them. The creature will then fall on its rear and remain incapacitated for several seconds. This will allow you to finish it off with a bunch of melee combos. While fighting horriblins at close range, you can do the general combats of perfect dodging as well as parrying them. 
If you do have a hard time timing their strikes, you can use an Ice Infused Spear to incapacitate them and then attack them after they do three times damage. Now for the Wiz Robes. Fire and Meteor Wiz Robes can be defeated instantly with a solitary Ice Infused Arrow. While Ice Wiz Robes and Blizz Robes will fall to a single Fire Arrow. Really easy to take down. Electric and Thunder Wiz Robes are rather more troublesome as they lack any elemental vulnerability. So the best option is to target them with a headshot with your most powerful bow. When they fall, sprint over to them and quickly finish them off with a melee weapon. If you stand below a Wiz Robe, a spear can often give you just enough reach to strike your opponent. I never tried standing underneath them with a spear before. Peblets are the miniature version of the dub boss. Speaking of mini bosses, if you want to see the recommended tactics for that video, let's get this video to a thousand likes. All peblets are extremely vulnerable to crushing weapons. Strengthen any base weapon with a suitable horn, boulder, or spike ball, and the resulting hammer or smasher will quickly reduce them to dust. Another way to pulverize peblets is to throw a bomb flower at them. If you do this against a tightly packed group when they first move to engage Link, this can end the fight before it even begins. There also is an alternative way to eliminate peblets, which is moving close to them and pressing A to lift them above your head. They will explode shortly thereafter, so make sure to throw them away from you. This also works against Igneo Peblets and Frost Peblets, but you have to make sure to neutralize their elemental property before you do it. Then you can just pick it up and throw it. Let's see the recommended tactics for Octoroks. Arrows are effective if you manage to time your shots well. You will usually need to aim in advance, then shoot just as the creature emerges from its hiding spot. Melee weapons can also be used at close range. So when the Octorok goes down in the ground, blades can be used to cut shrub or the trees on their head, while crushing weapons will shatter the stone on the heads of the rock Octoroks. Once stripped of all their cover, all Octoroks will immediately pop out from their hiding spot, giving you a chance to hit them. You can also defeat them by blocking with the shield to redirect their projectiles back at them, which usually only works when you're at close range. But if you do a perfect guard, it'll propel the rocks back at them at a faster velocity. The large explosive projectile fired by a rock Octorok is best dealt with by casting Recall. Little Froxes are practically harmless. Usually encountered in groups, they will attempt to jump at you. You can parry these assaults to flip them onto their back or just wipe them out with any attack of your choice before they even have a chance to threaten you. Also, something interesting about the Little Frox is that they actually eat bright bloom seeds that are activated near them which can be really problematic if you needed that to light up the area. Everbeans are tree creatures that come to life when you are nearby. They have a single attack where they bend backward before slamming the ground in front of them. The ones not bearing fruit or honey are most notable because they can drop monster extract when they fall. Everbeans are extremely weak to axes and more generally all sharp edged weapons. One or two strikes is usually all it takes to knock them down. They also are very vulnerable to fire. Any flame infused weapon or arrow will deal damage damage over time, leaving them unable to attack for as long as they are ablaze. I noticed this one came after me even though it was still on fire. Aracudas are flying creatures that typically glide over their territory, attacking when they notice an intruder. They usually pose little difficulty as they will literally just die to a single arrow. If you struggle to hit them, something that you can do is jump from a position of suitable elevation or just somewhere really up high. These are one of my favorite enemies. The Gibdo and Moth Gibdos are largely immune to most attacks until you hit them with an elemental effect or surprisingly Dazzle Fruits, which work really well. You can use elemental like fire, ice, water, and lightning that all do damage to them. Lightning is probably the better option since it has a bigger area of effect and can hit more targets. Elemental damage will cause these Gibdos to turn white, and that's going to be your cue to go ahead and finish them off with your melee weapons. Also, a nice big bonus is that Gibdos drop Gibdo Bones, which give you an attack power of 40 that you can attach onto arrows to deal massive damage or freeze an enemy with and attack with another weapon fused to it to deal lots of damage. Now let's talk about the Yiga clan. The Yiga foot soldiers that wield a bow have one attack. They materialize high in the air and fire an arrow at you. What complicates matters is that they frequently warp around the battlefield. However, these enemies always drop to the ground after firing their arrows and take a brief moment to prepare to warp again. Sprint to their position while they are still airborne, being ready to swerve left or right when they fire an arrow and you can strike them before they vanish. The excellent speed and reach of spears suggest 
suggested again by Nintendo, make them a good choice against these foes. You will occasionally run into a foot soldier variant that can use melee attacks. You can try to perfect dodge their dash assaults to create a flurry rush opportunities and stay on the move to avoid their downward stabs when they materialize above you. There are also the Yiga Blade Masters, who are slower but more powerful. When they raise their weapon high above their head, be prepared to side hop to dodge their swift Wind Razor beam attack. Their most annoying ability is also their weakness. This takes the form of a small crater that appears below Link's feet and will track his movements. After a few seconds, a rock spike will thrust forth from the ground, knocking Link from his feet if he is within an area of effect. The best way to avoid this is to leap vertically and open your paraglider. This will enable you to allow an easy headshot to incapacitate your foe, then drop nearby and hit them with melee blows.